Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome back. Are you tired? Do you feel like you need a nap? What are you carrying? You know, there's there's some days that I just I want to I want my own island. I want a palm tree. I want the breezes of the ocean. I just want to be left alone. I'm probably going to take a nap there because I'm tired and I'm just done with life. Can you relate? We're going to talk about some of the things that make us tired and what God's remedy is. I you know actually the remedy. I'll give you a hint. It is only carrying what God tells us to carry. Easier said than done, right? But what are the things that make you tired? You know, when my kids were little, we raised five kids, um, five kids in five years. Okay. That was our age span, five years. And honestly, I longed for quiet moments when no one was pulling on me. No one was demanding anything. I was tired for quite a number of years. I used to say I could do anything if I could get, just get some sleep. Can you relate? Sometimes in life, we just need to take a good nap, right? Sometimes we just need to rest. When I would run marathons and put out that physical exertion, the next day, my body, my entire body, head to toe, was just tired and worn out. Honestly, if I'm on the road doing extensive periods of ministry, I get tired. I've had to learn that when I come home, I take a day of rest the next day. And honestly, sometimes life's disappointments and challenges in and of themselves can make us feel worn out and tired and overwhelmed, right? Okay, so there's all these things, but God never grows tired. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So before we dive into that further, let me just welcome everyone. My name is Ruth Hendrickson. I run RHM International, the website, ruthhendrickson.org. Our heartbeat is to really see the body of Christ raised up, set free, whole, healed, delivered, so that we can have the impact on the world around us, so that we're doing the stuff, we're setting people free, we're, we're seeing people come into the kingdom of heaven, we're seeing healings, we're raising the dead, all those wonderful things that scripture promises us, but we need to be healed up. So if you want to learn more, just visit that website, all sorts of resources on there. And if you need some ministry yourself, you're dragging some things around which are making you tired, because you have woundings he, um, that need to be uh, healed, okay, labels that need to be torn off because you need to see yourself as God sees you. It's also where you can find out about Masha, which is our healing and deliverance ministry, our emotional healing and deliverance ministry, and that team ministers around the world. You can also get trained in that ministry model. It's biblical, it's sound, it's effective, it's powerful. So again, the website's ruthhendrickson.org. Okay, before you get tired of hearing me talk about all that stuff, let's dive back in and remind ourselves that our God never gets tired. You know, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30, it, it's Jesus talking. And this is what he says. He says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and, my, and the burden I give you is light. Okay, Jesus is saying that when we are weary to come to him, which means he knows that we're going to get weary. He knows that the burdens are going to be heavy. But right here, he's saying, I'm telling you where you can go. And I am telling you that I am faithful and I will give you rest. So the first place we need to go is to him. Okay, he is the one who takes those burdens. He's going to take those heavy burdens that are too heavy for us to carry. And, and he will lead us. He, he yokes us to himself. And that's light. You know, the, um, his yoke, it says his yoke is easy to bear and his burden is light. He did not make us to carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. That's actually his job. But he knows, and I want you to hear this, he knows that we will become tired, we will become weary, we will become overwhelmed, we will become burdened. But again, he's telling us where to come and do an exchange of burdens, okay? So our full potential can only be found by carrying what God gives us to carry and nothing more and nothing less. Okay, that's how we walk into our full potential. But he understands that sometimes we pick up too much and he's like, just come to me give it to me. Now I've done enough ministry and I've walked enough years myself to know that sometimes we give it and then we pull it back as we walk away. Can you relate? Okay. It's like, here you go, Lord. Okay. Thank you, Lord. I feel so much relief. Just, oh God, this is so good. You filled me with joy overflowing. And then we walk away and we go about our day. 
or we're back in the situation and it's like we reach back and go oh i i'm gonna just take this burden and we put it back on and he's saying give it to him let him take it let him carry it and yes sometimes that means that we keep going back and we go back and we go back and we're like oops i took it back lord oh you know what lord i went out and i found more weariness i found more and, and and we take it back we keep doing that adjustment that burden exchange so that we're only carrying what he wants us to carry so you know there's so many things that make us tired physically and emotionally and sometimes it's the combination that come together and oh my gosh it really does a number on us doesn't it and so you know, truthfully, our bodies and our minds are both made in such a way that we need sleep. We can't be hypervigilant. We can't be always awake. We can't sleep with one eye open. We are created to have rest. Okay. We need rest. Remember, even when the Lord created, you know, when, when God created the world, what did he do? All of creation, he rested. He took time to rest. He modeled for us what it means to rest. Okay. So, you know, but we do, we do have those times when we need to back away and we need to sleep and we need to retreat. And I've also heard people put that on God, like God must get tired of hearing this or God must be tired of hearing my prayers or, you know, God never tires of you. You're his son, you're his daughter, you're his beloved, you're his bride. You're his inheritance. He loves you so much. He never gets tired. But we also have to understand that he gives us the sad. It's like, bring all of it to me and leave it here. Let me take it. Let's switch burdens. You can have mine. It's, it's light. It's easy. You know, Psalm 121, two to four says, my help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he watches over Israel, never slumbers or sleeps. Your God, my God, is always watching over us. He does not slumber and sleep. He's not out for lunch. He is not looking the other direction. He is watching over you faithfully, faithfully watching over you and giving you the strength to carry what he's called you to carry, not to carry everything else, but what he's called you to carry, what he's called me to carry. You know, as a kid, I had a rock tumbler. They're noisy, aren't they? Yeah, you know, they are noisy things, but man, do kids love them. And I have a friend who loves them too as an adult. She's a really good rock tumbler because she just loves what happens in that whole process. So, but as a kid, I had my rock tumbler. And of course it lived in the basement. My parents were not about to have it upstairs in the main part of the part of the house, but you know, I'd put the rocks in and the appropriate gritty sand and round and round and round and round they'd go clanking together hitting against each other you know being rubbing with the sand and i'd wait and i'd wait and i'd wait until i'd open that container and i could rinse them all out and i could change the grit and i would see the progress that had been made you see because what was happening is they bumped against each other and as that sand was there that abrasion it was softening the rough edges it was shining them up what had looked dull in the natural was becoming shiny as it was agitated, as it, as it bumped up against the other rocks and it began to shine and it was smooth. Hebrews 12, 11 tells us that all discipline, all discipline, okay, seems more pain than pleasure when we're going through it, right? Yet later, later, as, as we're, as we're bumping together, as we're, as that sand is, is coming against us, What's happening is there is a transformation of our character that's happening, which brings a harvest of righteousness and peace as we yield to it, because God will shine us. But we have to, again, only be carrying his burden. You see, the rocks could only become polished and smooth if they went through a process. And when God takes us through a process and we yield to it, we can be assured that we will always yield a harvest in our lives. And Hebrews remind us that in that harvest is a mix of righteousness and peace. So what does this have to do with being tired? And what does this have to do with only carrying the burden that God calls us to bury? Well, or bury, yeah, carry, carry the burdens that God calls us to carry. You know, we can get tired of the challenges and uncertainties of life. At least I can. But God never tires of refining us. He's right there. Uh, Philippians 1, 6 out of the Passion Translation. This is so good. This is so good. This is the way it reads. It says, I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you 
and will put his finishing touches to it until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I notice a couple things here. One is Paul is praying with great faith. There's an excitement. There's an anticipation of what God's doing in their life. You know, think of Paul's background. Think of all that he went through, the radical change in his life. He sees a future. He's looking ahead even for the body of believers and for himself. And he's seen something different. He's seen the maturing process and he's seen the Lord putting the finishing touches on. He knows that they're going to be brought to completion and that they come out smooth and shiny. I remember the rocks after the first round. They weren't smooth and they weren't shiny yet. They were still in process. And sometimes we're still in process. And part of that process is learning to take the the tiredness and the weariness and the frustration, our burdens, and take them to God and do a burden exchange. So let me just bring this together here. There's so many ways in life where we can get tired, right? It's like, let me count the ways. Just counting the ways will add to that burden and make us tired, right? Okay, but here's the thing. Even when we are tired and hopeless, we can be assured that we have a God who never slumbers and sleeps. He's watching over us. If we need to go take a nap, sometimes the best thing we can do is go take a nap. Not a depression nap, but a refreshing nap. Okay, to, to, and, and, and just put on the worship music, uh, have scripture playing, immerse ourselves in the presence of God. And even if we fall asleep, it's okay. We used to have all these times of soaking prayer. Remember that? Some of you guys still do that. It's phenomenal just to spend time in the Lord's presence. And sometimes we would hear as we were gathered together corporately, we would hear somebody beginning to snore. Well, you know what? Sometimes we just need to take a nap in the presence of the Lord and let him fill us, do that burden exchange, refresh us. So anyways, our God will never slumber or sleep, which means we need, if we need to rest, when we need to sleep, we can do so with confidence because he's on guard duty. He's standing guard over us right there. So for the trials and challenges of life, when these are placed in the hands of the living God, we can be assured that he will somehow work in and through them to smooth off the rough edges and to polish us and let us shine for him. Because when we shine for him, we reflect his image in amazing ways. But part of the process is learning to only carry what he gives us to carry. Some of us right now need to go do a burden exchange with the Lord. We've been carrying more than what we're supposed to carry. We feel very tired and worn out and weighed down physically, emotionally, spiritually. We're wondering if his yes and amen is truly yes and amen. We're wondering if he's gone to sleep. And the, the, the cry right now, the invitation from the very throne room of heaven is to go to him and do that burden exchange. It's like it's open right now. He's ready to take that heavy heaviness off you and give you his burden, which is light and his yoke, which is easy, which you were made. We were care. Think of what his, think of what that is. I, I mean, this is just a random thought coming to me right now, but what is the burden of the Lord? It's to show the world who he is. It's, it's to allow his joy to be our strength. It's to grieve differently. It's to, it's, to, it's to point to him. It's to bring creative solutions in. That's what we carry. That's his burden. Not all the junk that life puts on us and the world puts on us. We're made to walk through that. We're made to take that to him and do a burden exchange. Some of you guys, your, your burden bear is, and you, you see the needs around you and it just holds you down. And the Lord right now is saying, yes, I made you to feel that. I made you to see it, but I also made you to lift it up to me because you're not, you, a burden bearer takes the burden and lifts it up before the Lord. And the Lord exchanges it. Very, very important concept. So you you are made to carry what God gives you to carry. Anything that God has not given you to carry, take it to him. His and, and if you're feeling heavy by the, you know, you're like, well, I've just got this burden. I know it's from the Lord. If there's a heaviness and it's overwhelming and it's frustrating, and it's taking you down, then you need to go and do a reevaluation with him. Because his burden is light and it is easy to carry. So if that burden is not feeling a heavenly lightness to it, then it needs to be reevaluated with God okay so again you are created to carry only what God calls you to carry the other things we take to him and we do a burden exchange so father right now we take our heaviness our weariness our frustration 
our pain, our sorrow. And Father, we just give it to you. And Lord, we ask you for what you want us to carry, God, your peace, your love, your joy. God, that there would be fruit, fruit, fruit that comes forth from us. That joy comes, that, that we reflect your image because you've polished us so well. So, Father, forgive us where we carry things that we shouldn't be carrying. And right now we want to do that realignment. So we come and we want to do that burden exchange because your burden is light and your yoke is easy. And that's what we're created to carry. So in Jesus name. Amen. So, again, thank you for joining me. Please share this. Spread the word. Find us on YouTube, Facebook, the podcast, Real Truth with Ruth. Have an amazing day. Be so blessed. Keep looking up. Do that burden exchange because you are made to walk in light. You are made to reflect the image of your loving God. You are made to change the world. That's who you are. Have a great day and be so blessed.